Welcome to Hammerdown Motorsports. Today we are headed over to Westy's shop. Guitarmageddon ZL1 called me today and we are going to uh, kind of go over a little bit of the things that are going to happen with the 2017 ZL1 over the winter. So he's going to be having Westy do some pretty crazy modifications to that car and we're going to let him explain that when we get to the shop. Also, as you guys all probably already know, the 2013 ZL1, the Freedom Rocket, ended up throwing a rod on the dyno and uh, there's all kinds of variables that could have attributed to that but I guess we'll let him elaborate on that when we get there. So Nick, why'd your car blow up? <laughs> <laughs> the first question he asked. <laughs> Didn't you watch the video, Steve? Everybody wants to know. God. Right from you. I, did, I listed all the facts, Steve, so that's the answer. Right I now. just said it would be multiple variables that could have attributed to the demise of the Freedom Rocket. It's true. That's like a true statement. Maybe the guy putting in the jets wasn't tall enough to be able to see the numbers. <laughs> just saying. So Nick, what are we doing to this car? What are we doing to this car? Wait, hang on a second. We're gonna put the key fob back in the car so it doesn't lock. First. We're gonna rip the blower off, put some snails in there. Either two smaller snails or one gigantic snail. I'm not really sure. Hair dryers. Hair dryers, snails, still even, whatever, you know, same Blenders. Thing. Yeah. Blenders, uh, <laughs> alternators. <laughs> <laughs> She's ready for snow plowing. Yeah. Two alternators. Dual alternators. So Westy's gonna explain to us how a turbo oh. system works for those of you who don't know. So the way the way a turbo works is is uh, this flange right here is what bolts to your exhaust manifold. So you can imagine it in terms of this not being on an engine, just uh, on your on your car. You know, your tailpipe would essentially be bolted to here. You would shove your tailpipe in here. That exhaust gas goes in here through this snail and winds up spinning this exhaust wheel, okay? This exhaust wheel is on the shaft that this nut is on, and the shaft comes through the turbo, just like the pen, and on the other side has a compressor wheel. So when this wheel on the other side spins, it spins the compressor wheel, just like the, the, the compressor wheel on a uh, Vortex supercharger is essentially one half of this. It's driven by a pulley on the opposite side. This is driven by exhaust gas. So this is driven by spent exhaust gases and that's why our turbo is so efficient. You're using uh, the waste of the engine to drive it. So there's no horsepower robbed by a pulley that has to be spun by a belt. This is simply driven by the exhaust pressure coming out of the engine. So the more exhaust pressure that comes out the other side and goes into here that spins the wheel on the other side which in turn spins the wheel on this side, the more this spins, the more this compresses, the more boost it makes. Mm -hmm. So. When that compresses this air, the air, the fresh air um, from atmosphere is drawn in through here, is compressed by this spinning wheel. The compressed charge is then sent out this snail and into your engine. Now, obviously, it depends on whether you have a uh, intercooler or not. This could go directly into your into your engine. If you have an intercooler system, this would go through a set of plumbing, through an intercooler, which is an air-to-air -air, uh, interchange intercooler. 
which takes some of your heat out of your air cooled charge, or out of your pressurized charge, and then sends a cooler air charge into your intake. Um, a couple other necessary components to make a uh, turbocharger work would be a blow off valve and a wastegate. Uh, the job of a blow off valve is it's in, it's in the charge pipe, it would be essentially right here. Um, when you close your throttle blade, there's still, say, if you're running a 12 pound boost in, in your system, there's 12 pounds of boost in this pipe. So as soon as your throttle blade closes, there's still 12 pounds of force that's in this pipe that's trying to ram past that valve. So uh, what happens is, is that blow off valve opens, vents that pressure out, that's the psh noise that you hear, that lets the 12 PSI go out and the, the uh, pressure inside that pipe normalize so that it doesn't bend your throttle valve. Now, on the exhaust side, you need what's called a wastegate because like I said, this, is being, this thing is constantly being driven by your exhaust. Your car's making exhaust pressure as long as it's running. So um, the more that you're in your, get in your uh, throttle pedal and the more exhaust that, that, that engine is creating, the faster this wheel is going to spin and it's, and it's limitless. It's, it's a closed system. It'll continue to make more and more pressure. The way that we control that is with a wastegate. And what the wastegate does is it allows exhaust gas to bypass this wheel. It essentially allows the exhaust gas to be vented you know, say we, say we had a wastegate here, just say we had a hole drilled here with, with, a, with a valve um, that we could control via a boost controller, which would be by a manifold vacuum or pressure or by an electronic solenoid, however you're doing it. It would open that gate to allow the exhaust to come out and be vented to atmosphere rather than continue to go through here and continue to spin the wheel. So if the exhaust is going across that wheel and you can't control it, this thing's going to make whatever pressure it could possibly make and you couldn't get it to stop. So the way we control the amount of boost that it makes is with a wastegate. We don't, we don't allow all that exhaust to go through and spin the wheel. We're just dumping it off. That's why it's called a wastegate. We're just wasting that uh, exhaust gas. This is a 370Z that's in, uh, has a twin set up and uh, the motor popped. So I'm in the process of tearing it apart, going to be rebuilding this guy's motor and uh, you know, putting the twins on, onto this motor when it's rebuilt. Um, but this has a twin style inter intercooler. This car actually has two throttle bodies. A lot of uh, cars have two throttle bodies rather than one. So this one, you know, as you can see, the turbo output would come out of the turbo, come into here, get cooled off, come out of here, and then go into the throttle body. Yours, well, you know, in retrospect, it probably, yours doesn't have two throttle bodies, so maybe we just do a two into one. But uh, I can certainly make uh, an intercooler for you. We'll, we'll fabricate a custom intercooler for it. We won't buy one. So okay. we'll make something pretty cool. And what about the intake manifold? You wanna intake manifold, I'm not sure. Um, we'll see what's available. Uh, and if there's something that's readily available that fits the bill, we'll do that rather than waste time making one. Yeah. But we can certainly build you a uh, intake manifold as well. So Nick, when you first got this car and it had 63 miles and we were doing the first pull with it, at what point did you decide that it was going to change and not leave it? Stuck? Everybody remembers that video. <laughs> that was a great video. I loved it. I remember you saying you were just going to track it, drive it daily. The other one's going to do the race car. What what made you yeah. change your mind? Never went to the track. Never never daily did. <laughs> now I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just throwing the warranty out the window and just saying screw it. You know what I mean? Because it, it's like seeing other cars, seeing other ZL1s like this getting modded, it's just like, all right. Don't want to be left behind. God oh, damn. Yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm going to do. But I'm going to go a completely different route. Because I already got the blown, you know, V8 drag car. Literally at this point. Shut up. Too that, soon, Steve. Too I soon. Think that, that's the beard talking. It's it the is beard. the beard. Drop in the comments, what do you think of Nick's beard, yes or no? As compared to Steve's beard. Side by side comparison. Steve's been growing and treating that beard for a while. This is only a couple weeks. This is a fresh trim. <laughs> Gotta cut off the grays. That's, yeah, dude, I, did, I, I pulled a few right here. There's a couple whites. Not gray, fucking white, dude. Yeah, when you have kids, they're, they're, you can't hide them. You'd be ripping the whole beard off. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we're gonna do something different with the car. Everyone's doing, everybody's doing the pulley, the, you know, the intake, the, Ported blower. The safe stuff. The, the, I mean, yeah, the safe stuff, just the, the bolt-on mods for the supercharger that's on the car. But like, but there's only, I think, I can name, well, the SEMA car, but that wasn't a ZL1, was it? I showed? believe that was an SS. Okay, so I can, if that's the case, then I can only name, like, maybe two people that I know of. 
that are that are actually doing a twin turbo setup on this car. But they're doing a setup that's it's already made. Some some company already made it for. You know, we're gonna do something completely custom, and hopefully we're gonna hopefully we'll get the highest number out of it. I mean, that's up to that's up to CSP. I'm taking my car over there to get tuned, but we'll see. So once the system's done and it's got amazing numbers, probably better than any other ZL1 out there, you know who to come to to get it done? Westy at Westy Speed Shop. Westy plans to jig this kit and make it available to everyone. You know, there's no sense in just making it for Nick. I know he wants it all for himself, but I'm going to ruin that for him. <laughs> so what's happening to the Freedom Rocket? What's happening or what's happened? What's going on yeah. with it now? Um. It's going to be built. The built LSA block is going out, well, it's gonna go out to be machined first. They actually, magically, they've had one in their shop. Uh, take my glasses off. Sorry, we were doing a thumbnail earlier. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be machined. Um, and then I'm gonna order a different transmission and have that built too, and then they'll both go in together. You know, once the, once the, once the engine's back from being Forge bottom end. Yeah, well, um, it's going to be built to the point that to withstand the power level that I have currently. And then if I decide to go with more power down the road, eventually I can just, uh, maybe I'll just do an LSX block. And then it'll be like really tough. And I can just put a whole ton of power and not worry, you know, not worry about it. So that's the plan. So we're full of useful information today. We're going to show you guys which fuse to pull for the MPP system on the ZL1. Good. <laughs> that one right in there. It's position uh, F51. That'll give you a 300 shot of nitrous. Well, there you have it, everybody. Nick is finally going to modify the 6th gen Camaro. It is going to be a pretty intense process putting twin turbos on this car, but I can't wait to see the result. Maybe we'll have to put twin turbos on my 6th gen. I'm not too sure yet, but. Hey, never know what the future might hold. So if you like the video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and keep that hammer down.